So in my last video, I talked about single reed mouthpieces for the bassoon, and this video we're going to talk about something at least as equally ridiculous, and that is extensions for the contrabassoon. Now, just a little bit of background information for those of you who may not be bassoonists. The regular range of the bassoon is down to B flat 1. <laughs> And that holds true for virtually every instrument modern enough to call itself a bassoon, as opposed to a kurtal or a dulcian, uh, can play down to that B flat one. However, during the um, latter half of the 19th century, it became possible to buy instruments that descended one half step further down to A1. Uh, this, is prim this was primarily spearheaded by Richard Wagner, but was followed by uh, Gustav Mahler and a handful of other composers. Now, it's possible to have uh, a low A extension added to uh, a modern instrument through extensive and expensive customization, but for most of us, these notes don't occur often enough to go to that much trouble, so we use uh, an extension. Very high-tech cardboard tube in the bell, just enough to lower the low B flat to low A. Now this is not perfect. Um, for one thing, you're actually not adding a new note to the instrument as much as you are flattening the low B flat by a semitone, which means that the low, the true low B flat becomes impossible, and there's a gap. So if I try to play chromatically down to low A, there's that gap where low B flat would have been. And you also may have heard another problem, and that is that the low B natural becomes very stuffy. And the third problem is that it subtly affects the intonation and resonance of the rest of the instrument. So, if you ever go to a, see a Mahler symphony in person, you may see a uh, kind of hilarious choreography where your second and third and possibly even your first bassoonists are taking in and putting out, or putting in and taking out the extensions um, because they don't want to play with the extension in unless they absolutely have to because of how much it affects the other instruments, or the other part of the instrument's range. Now on the bassoon, it doesn't make much sense to create extensions below the low A um, for a handful of reasons. Um, but the most important reason why extensions below low A are not uh, made on the bassoon very often is because there's not much need for them to be. Because why write a low G sharp for bassoon when you can just write for the contrabassoon instead? The situation on the contrabassoon is quite similar. The regular range of the contrabassoon is down to B flat, well it's written B flat 1, but it sounds an octave lower, so B flat 0. And that holds true for the large majority of modern instruments, especially in the United States. In uh, Europe, it's a little bit easier to find instruments that are built down to A0. Now for those of us who just have a contrabassoon down to B flat, have to play a piece that calls for low A, we do something similar to the bassoon, we make an extension. Although in this case it is obviously longer and uh, wider. Now uh, Arlen Fast, the uh, contrabassoonist with the New York Philharmonic and the, um, the developer of the Fast system, um, already made a video 
where he documented a low A extension. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the low A extension. Instead, I'll just link to his video. But I would like to point out that um, his contrabassoon has a larger bell than mine does. So he was able to use sections of 3-inch mailing tube, whereas on my instrument, they do not quite fit. So instead, I took a 3-inch mailing tube, cut a long wedge out of it, and uh, not only does that make it the one end small enough to fit in my bell, but it also gives it a slight taper, uh, because the contrabassoon, like the bassoon, is a conical instrument. Now, if we were, if we try to build extensions beyond low A for the contrabassoon, we run into one problem pretty quickly, and that's the ground. The low A extension already comes fairly close to the ground, and a low G sharp extension would have to be played standing up. So with that in mind, this is the first part of my low G sharp extension. By itself, it doesn't produce any specific note. It's actually somewhere between low A and low G sharp. But what it does is tapers from the diameter I need it to be to fit in my bell down to three inches where I can use PVC, uh, just a plain PVC elbow and rest, rest it on the ground. So this length here is simply whatever length uh, worked best for me to sit down and have it rest on the ground because I did not want the weight of the extension being supported by the bell. To make it a low G sharp, I add this short piece, just a 45 degree PVC elbow and a, a very short uh, length of this uh, cylindrical 3 inch mailing tube that lowers it to G sharp. For low G, I can take off this section. and replace it with a longer section. So that together, they produce a low G, G0 in this case. Now, I kept this section here cylindrical because acoustically, the uh, following the taper of my instrument, uh, a Mollenhauer, low G would be about three inches in diameter, or the bell would be about three inches in diameter. Now, I expanded a little faster than that through the first part of the taper. That was because I can't really buy two and three quarters inch PVC elbows. So instead, I left this, uh, the bell for the low G at three inches. Now, in all honesty, low G is already pretty silly looking. And this is probably the, the lowest extension I would ever actually use. In fact, um, I have used low G in an orchestra once. Uh, uh, it was a uh, it was a newer composition, and it was clearly a typo. You know, uh, someone was copying over a tuba part in finale into the contrabassoon, took it down an octave, and just overlooked the fact that there was one 
G G zero written. But um, it gave me an excuse to use my low G extension, so I was happy. Anything larger than that, not only is it increasingly ridiculous looking, increasingly unwieldy, but it also requires the use of four inch mailing tubes, which are quite difficult to find, but I was able to get some with which I built my, oh, let me put this away for a second, my F sharp. Finally, <clears throat> my E, and I'll try to get the whole thing in frame, although I don't think I can. So that brings us to the question you're probably all asking right now, why? Why build these extensions? It's obviously not for practical reasons. Um, low A, even though you can purchase contra bassoons that play down to low A, it's still an exceedingly rare note in orchestral repertoire. Uh, the, the best example I know of is from uh, Strauss's Electra, which is actually fairly exposed. Um, the, as I said earlier, the only time I've ever played a low G in a performance was clearly a typo, uh, not that that stopped me. Um, but I did learn at least one interesting thing, and that is that the contrabassoon reed holds up much better than I ever would have expected, even down to that lowest E. Uh, and I should stress that um, this is not a modified reed. This is a reed that I would use for regular playing. In fact, it qu plays quite well, even up into the highest parts of the instrument's range. And although the lowest notes on the extension are more difficult to play, they're not terribly difficult. In fact, I was recently giving a lesson to a high school student of mine who was playing the contrabassoon for the very first time, and um, at the end of the lesson, just kind of for fun, I threw the low, low E extension in and he got it out. So, I don't know what that means. Uh, Ideally, I would love it to. I would love it if, at some point, someone actually built an instrument lower than this one. Um, I don't know who would buy it, but uh, Benedict Eppelsheim, if he ever gets uh, really, uh, really bored one day, I, I'd love to see a subcontra bassoon. Well, anyway, um, at least until I get bored and build a low E flat or a low D, that's all I have to say about contra bassoon extensions.